Good morning, GMS. I'm Jack. And my name's Zach. And welcome to the GMS News Show for the week of February 3rd. This month's new root value for January is positivity. This means the practice of being or tendency to be positive or optimistic in attitude. How can you be positive today? Last weekend, the GMS Robotics team had a fantastic performance coming from 19th place to knock off the number one alliance team to finish second in the robotics competition. The high school and middle school teams took home a combined seven awards from the competition. Be sure to give a high five and congratulate the following GMS Robotics team members. Olivia Forster, Corabel Height, Ishani Shaw, Braden Haffin, Noah Serkin, Chase King, Austin Smith, Ben Warnhart, Emma Baker, Scarlett Palma, and Audrey Shaw. Any student planning on participating in athletics at GMS must have a physical and file at school before they can participate. For this semester, the gym suits will now be $12 instead of 10 If you only need a shirt or only a pair of shorts, you will only be charged $6 each. During the months of January and February, students are asked not to walk or bike to school doing due to the weather. Jason Reynolds, the author of our Read and Feed book this year, visited GMS last Tuesday. It was an honor to have the National Ambassador for Young People's Literature take time out of his busy schedule to spend time with us at GMS. Thank you, Jason, for the visit, and we hope you had as much fun as we did. Later in the show, we will share an interview with the that the GMS News Group did with Mr. Reynolds, as well as highlights of his visit. A huge thank you to all who supported Susical Jr. Your attendance, donations, and kind words for the kids helped make this an overwhelming success. A special thank you goes to Ms. Lincor and Parker Irwin for taking a vision and making it a reality. Finally, we are so proud of the hardworking cast and crew members. That show was amazing, and you did an incredible job. Now let's go to the interview of the week, top trending GMS roll call, and a special segment with author Jason Reynolds. Have a great week, everybody. Hi, I'm Ava Walshek, and I'm here with the interview of the week. How are you doing, Miss Lingridge? I'm good. How are you? Okay, for our first question is how long have you been teaching at GMS? I've been here for 30 years, a long time. Our next question is have you ever taught at any other school? Um, I taught a month at Greencastle before I started teaching here. Okay, for our third question is, what is your favorite thing about math that you teach? I like teaching algebra stuff, solving equations, dealing with expressions, and so on. For our fourth question is, what do you like to do outside of school? Um, lots of things. I like to be with my friends, too, just like you guys do, and um, I like to watch my kids do the things that they do. Okay, for our very last question, it is, if you weren't a teacher, what would you do? That's a tough one. Um, right now, I think it would be fun to be a business owner and uh, run a small shop somewhere. I think it'd be fun to be a pharmacist, an accountant. Lots of options that if I were to go back and do it again, I think would be fun things to consider. Okay, thank you. Now back to the studio. Welcome to the Top Trending, where we discuss the latest trends of the week. I'm Aubrey Costello. And I'm Ava Augustine. Number three, the Australian wildfires. The fires have been blazing since late December. Celebrities like Ellen DeGeneres, Kylie Jenner, Shawn Mendes, and many others have donated generous amounts of money to helping people and animals in fires. There was even a donation of $32 million made by a comedian, Celeste Barber. Like the pop star Lizzo, many people volunteered at food banks and shelters. After the fires had go gotten out of hand, countries like the USA sent firefighters to help. But recently, rain began to fall in Australia, providing a little bit of relief for our country. Number two. Victor Oladipo, 
Victor Oladipo made his long-awaited return to the Pacers after suffering a ruptured quad tendon in his right knee. He has been out for over a year now, and all Pacers fans are ready for his return. The Pacers also signed the guard Malcolm Brog Brogdon, and fans are excited to see what this duo can do for the team. However, with, with being out for so long, will he still be a, the great player and leader he once was? What do you think? Number one, the death of Kobe Bryant. The legendary NBA Hall of Famer Kobe Bryant died on January 26 in a tragic helicopter crash, along with Kobe, eight others, including his 13-year-old daughter. Gianna died in the crash as well. Reportedly, they were on their way to Gianna's travel basketball game when the tragic event happened. In honor of Kobe Bryant's death, every NBA team that played took a 24-second violation representing his number 24, which was his name throughout most of the, his career. Trey Young, a point guard for the Atlanta Haw Hawks, wore the number eight, Kobe's, Kobe's other number, in his game against the Washington Wizards. Devin Brooker and Trey Young, both, both young basketball players who grew up watching Kobe and looked up to him, scored 81 points combined with which is the highest amount of points Kobe scored in one game. Kobe Bryant was an amazing basketball player, leader, father, teammate, and he changed the way we see the game of basketball, and he will never be forgotten. This is GMS Roll Call with Davis Arthur. With so many fast food restaurants around Greenwood, we want to know what your favorite is and why. Chick fil A, because it's good. Um, Qdoba, because their steak is really good. McDonald's and the Quarter Pounder. Uh, I'll have to say Taco Bell, because why not? My favorite fast food at, 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 is a uh, place is uh, Pizza Hut, because they're good. Yeah, but I gotta say Burger King because I like their burgers. I like Egg Row One because I like Chinese, spicy Chinese food. Oh, I love Chick-fil-A. Their sandwiches are great and love those waffle fries. Taco Bell because I like their refried beans and it also reminds me of Friday nights before football when my boys and my husband and I would go and have Taco Bell before the games. The Arby's because of their Jamocha shake. Chick-fil-A, because I'm a fan of delicious flavor. Hello, my name is Dalton Hawkersmith, and welcome to another GMS News Sports Update. On Monday, February 3rd, the 7th grade girls basketball team will be at home facing Decatur starting at 5.30. The 8th grade girls basketball team will be at Decatur starting at 5.15. On Tuesday, February 4th, the middle school wrestling team will be at Jennings County Middle School starting at 6 p.m. On Wednesday, February 5th, the 7th and 8th grade boys basketball team will be on their second day of their county tournament at home starting at 5.30. The 7th and 8th grade girls basketball team will be at home starting at 5.30 facing Indian Creek. The middle school swimming team will be at the high school facing Paul Hadley starting at 5.30. On Thursday, February 6th, the 7th and 8th grade girls basketball team will be at home starting at 5.15 facing Southport. The middle school swimming team will be at Martinsville starting at 6 p.m. The middle school wrestling team will be at Indian Creek starting at 5.30. My name is Dalton, is Dalton Hawkersmith and now back to the studio. Hi, I'm Emma Baker and we're here with the critically acclaimed uh, Jason Reynolds, who has also been recently named the National Ambassador for Young People's Literature. So how has your day in Greenwood been so far? Uh, it's been good. I mean, I've been to Indiana a few times. Um, I don't think I've been to this school, but it's been, it's been lovely. The kids are wonderful. I've been uh, treated kindly. It's good. Yeah. Nice. And... Do you currently have a new book in the works? And if so, can you tell us anything about it? Uh, so I have a lot of things in the works. I mean, there's a book coming out in a couple of months, actually, um, called Stamped. And really what I want to do with it is shift the way we're teaching history in schools and kind of push back a little bit. It's, it's the 
the definitive history of sort of race in America, and it kind of talks about how we got where we are today um, and gives a little more information and context so that we can better have informed conversations. You know, It's healthy for, I think, all of us to start to lean into those conversations, but there's never been anything written with young people in mind. And this book is just for you and your generation to have the language to have these conversations in a way that's much better than I think we as adults have been having. Yeah, that's awesome. And uh, who or what inspired you to become an author? I mean, for me, it wasn't really, I mean, I grew up with a lot of music, musical influences, and so that was a part of it. But also, I come from a storytelling family. You know, I come from kind of family that sits around and lies to each other all the time, you know, see who can make up the best ridiculous story. And, and we pretend like we believe them, but we never really believe anything because we know it's all lies. But it, but it made for a sort of this household where you understood what a story contained. You knew how to engage people and how to make people laugh and how to make people cry. And you could kind of do all these things at the dinner table in my household. And so I think that was also a part of it. And then lastly, I think I just really wanted to be able to tell the stories that I never heard when I was a kid and to tell my own stories. I mean, a lot of this stuff is coming from my personal experience. And, uh, you know, I'm kind of working that stuff out in the midst of telling these stories. Nice. And then I've read almost all of your young adult books. Mm -hmm. So, and they all feature some sort of violence, whether it's like people beating each other up, gun violence. Uh, um, is that something you dealt with growing up, or where exactly did that influence in your stories come in? I think, you know, I think violence is something that we we don't like to talk about. It's not sort of a comfortable topic, but I also think that our, our country, as much as we love it, I think we have a hard time talking about anger in a real way. And I think my books are, less about violence, more about sort of what does it mean to be angry as young people, because I was, and a lot of my friends were, and a lot of young people I meet every day are angry about something, and it doesn't mean it always shows itself as violence, but it does mean at some point we have to have real conversations about the true emotions that young people are having, whether it's fear or insecurity or anger, um, trauma. These are very real things that live in our bodies as kids that show themselves in ugly ways as we get older. Um, and my job isn't to sort of glorify any of it, but to say that I acknowledge it's there and to bear witness to the lives of, of our youth, um, to honor them as human beings and anger as a part of our human experience. Um, so what is a hidden talent that you have that not a lot of people know about? Oh, goodness. I can cook. Uh, I, can, I, can cro I can make anything with yarn. I can make a whole suit with a couple skeins of yarn in a couple of hours, you know, like I, I grew up doing that. Um, a lot of things, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I could decorate a house with my eyes closed. You know, I love any of that kind of stuff. I'm more of like a crafts guy, you know. I also was an athlete, like lots of things about me that I never talk about, but there's lots of parts of my life that, you know, I, are still active and I still tap into. Super cool. Yeah. Cool. Um. How confident are you usually in the stories that go on to get published? Um, so, and have you ever had a novel that you didn't feel super well about, but you like it did really well? Yeah, all of them. All of them. I don't think, look, as an artist, you make a thing that you spent years working on and toiling over, and people judge it in days, right? So I've spent two years to make a thing. It comes out, and two days later, there are reviews about whether or not people think they like it or not. That's an agonizing feeling, right? It's like, I've given my life to this thing, and you get to say that you hate it. And I can't do anything about that. So I never am secure. I'm, there's always insecurity there, the insecurity that keeps me editing and editing and editing until my editor says, no more. Like, that's enough. My agent says, yo, like, let it go. We're done. We're going to put it out. But if it were up to me, I would edit and edit, and none of these books would have ever hit the store because I just am so obsessed about making sure that it's right. And it never quite feels right. No matter how confident people think I am, no matter how successful I've become, uh, every single book I'm scared to death. Yeah, and then when you plan and write your stories, how different is the end product from the storyline you originally visualized? You know, there's no planning involved. You know, I learned when I was in school that I hated to outline. It always felt like work before the work. And I was kind of like, why would I want to do work and then do work? You know, I'd rather just get right to it. And so I just kind of dive in. I usually have point A, point Q, and point Z, right? I know what's going to happen in the conflict, and I know 
how to end it, but I don't know how I'm going to get from point to point. And I think that's part of the adventure of writing. We have to remember this isn't a science. It's an art. It's creativity. And if I'm not having a good time making it, if it isn't adventurous to me, it won't be adventurous to you. Um, and then our last question is if you were able to go into any book and be any one of the characters, which would book would you choose and who would you be? If I can go into any book and be any one of the characters, the book, that's a good <laughs> question. I don't know. Probably like, who's like the coolest character I've ever read? Because be, that would be my answer. <laughs> you know I mean? But I don't know who that would be in me. I'd be like the lion and the lion, the witch in the wardrobe. <laughs> I don't know. That's a, I have to think about that. That's a really good question. I mean, every character is so flawed in the best books, right? Because even if I were to pick a character, it would probably be in a character. It would probably be a character in a book that I hate because the character, because the books that I love, all the characters are so flawed. It's what makes for a good book, right? So that's what our lives really are, you know? And so I don't I don't really know. It'd probably be some kid, though. It would probably be somebody really young who has a lot of sort of personality or somebody really old who has a lot of personality. Everybody in the middle is like in the muck and the mire, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay. Thank you for doing this. And that was our interview.